I just had a lovely, lovely afternoon watching your informative presentations. Thank you so much. Each one of you spoke on topics that were genuinely connected to you, and your words are valuable, and they're very sincere, and they mean a lot to me. So thank you so much. If you want to see who presented, I can go through a quick, quick, quick. We have uh, Mackenzie, and let's see, Mackenzie spoke about, um, she's a history major, and she spoke about Salem and the witch trials, and it's really a good presentation. If you've forgotten some of the details, Mackenzie will remind you. And then Caroline, which I absolutely love, she did hers on her life as, a, as in pool. She belongs to a pool, as in billiards league, and she's even was lucky enough after 12 years of being in this team, get to go to Las Vegas. She's now been there for 14 years. Caroline had, had wrote to me and she said um, she was concerned about the research sources. And I said, if you have done something for long enough, like maybe, you know, that you feel, I was gonna say over five years, but long enough that you feel like you are an expert, you are a research source, you do not need to be quoting me research sources. But I did notice quite a few people did great research, and believe me, I am very appreciative of that. And then we have Laura, who did her presentation on hope, which was so inspiring, how important hope is. And then, let's see, we had Chelsea, and let's see if I, I make sure I get it right. Chelsea, Chelsea, she spoke about, oh, she's over here. Yeah, she spoke about tattoos tattoos. Chelsea's brave enough to have a tattoo. I um, I have never had a tattoo. Not brave enough. Couldn't make a decision. But we, she talked about how mainstream tattoos have become and her opinion on it. And she did a really good informative speech on the concept and the life of tattoos. And then we have uh, Mina Hill who did it about how Pakistan is underwater and what happens to all those displaced people and how heartbreaking that is. It was a wonderful commentary from Minna Hill who spoke about Pakistan. And then Anna spoke about Joe Biden pardoning marijuana char charges and what the implications of that is and how far it goes into our criminal justice system and incarcerating. And there was an interesting bit of research that she said Louisiana uh, Louisiana, the state of Louisiana incarcerates more people and then she made a list of different places all together. It's amazing. And how many billions. I think the country spends about 181 to 182 billion a year on our prison system. So that's wonderful to hear from Anna. And then we have pa Paola who spoke about um, elementary school children, whether they should have homework or not have homework. And she speaks from um, primary research because she's in the schools incredibly good presentation and then Rebecca who spoke about how undiagnosed mental illnesses and oh have, are dangerous you sh uh, anyone who feels they might have something wrong should really go for treatment because undiagnosed mental illnesses can cause a lot of pain and suffering and not living with that secret can open you up Elizabeth also spoke about mental health and she focused on boredom and how people who are bored are often detached from life and could all even be depressed. And then Matthew. Matthew spoke about Universal Studios. And I've only been there once, but I got so excited by Matthew's presentation because even though it was as informative and not as persuasive, I want to go back to Universal. And then Sean did freshwater fishing. And he, I think he was right at the moment of packing up his car to go on a fishing trip this this past weekend, and he was he brought us along by showing his his what um, rod and reel he uses and his fishing lures, and I thought it was great. I thought he did a, a real charming job of using visual aids and engaging his audience with up close, uh, putting the visuals right into the camera, and it shows growth on Sean's spot um, part because prior to this he'd be like sitting stationary in his home. And now he changed his environment and I loved it. Alec talked about hate speech on college campuses and the importance of the awareness of that and checking yourself as far as any biases you might have 
It was a very sincere and excellent presentation. And then Lindsay, who's still upside down, I think I have emailed her, but she probably didn't see it, how her video uh, is now upside down. I have done the same thing, Lindsay, but it, even upside down, you did a really good job about winter skiing and it inspired me thinking I'm gonna take my grandchildren. Uh, she talked about Yahoo Valley, but she talked about uh, they, she talked about winter skiing and she did an excellent job in her introduction and breaking down her key, key uh, ideas. It was easy to follow and I thought it was an excellent job. So Lindsay with skiing, Elizabeth with um, boredom leading to mental illness, Matthew with Universal Studios, uh, Sean with freshwater f fly fishing, Alec with hate speech, uh, Rebecca with um, unmasking um, hidden mental illnesses, uh, you know, undiagnosed and how dangerous that is. Paola spoke about elementary school and homework. Anna spoke about Joe Biden and decriminalizing, trying to anyway, nationwide marijuana. Um, Mina Hill spoke about the underwater problem, the floods in Pakistan. And then, of course, Chelsea spoke about tattoos. And Laura spoke about the importance of hope. Caroline spoke about being in a pool league. And Mackenzie spoke about Salem, the witches. I could not even have imagined a better array of variety and how proud you should all be to be part of this group. There is a couple of more people in our class that have yet to post their informative speech. They were under the weather recently and they will be posting shortly. But we have 13 right now and that's good. Over here is week six starting today and up here on, in our course site is the journal and if you don't remember you click on journal and you read the instructions and you have you need one paragraph per person in our class and you can use these prompts or you can create your own feedback uh, this is just to guide you in case you're thinking what do I say always start over here which I get mad at Blackboard which is the system that we that this course is developed on at Bristol Community College if I were a student and I opened this up, I wouldn't know where to start. It's right up here, the small little font. Create your journal entry. Up here, you can you can you can put put a title, can write it out one after another on the same piece of paper, or you can attach a word document and then you post entry over here. And the only two people who see this is you and me. So it's private from the rest of the class. It's for you to use your listening skills and to demonstrate your awareness of what goes into a presentation and a um, appreciation. Here is Clint Smith. This is one of my favorite videos on the danger of silence. And then Keisha Brewer spoke, speaks about, this is under the persuasive theme, which is our next speech, but it's not manipulation, it's strategic. And I just think she makes a lot of good points. And then it's my video on the review of persuasion. This is the handout for persuasion. This here, Monroe's Motivated Sequence, is just a, t a way, a template that you can follow to create your persuasive presentation, but you do not have to. You might find that some of it you will do automatically because they give some key ideas. Like first, you get your audience's attention, establish the need, um, safe, uh, satisfy the need, visualize the future, and call to action. Let's just say your topic is recycling and you might get our attention by talking about the, 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 how full the landfills are and, and how all the products that are made every day and how many people are throw away things and, and how can we possibly keep these landfills for generations to come. And so that could get our attention and then that would go right into the need, the need to do something. We cannot possibly take on the stewardship of all this trash. What are we gonna do? and how we're gonna satisfy the need and maybe with recycling efforts and repurposing and whatever you would say and then visualize the future without these, um, these, these monolithic like mountains of trash and how much safer and healthier the environment will be. And then the call to action would be for us to get out and get involved in our own local recycling. So that's Monroe's sequence. It might work for you. Um, I, when years ago when I taught English, I had my students do that for an essay. This is a shortcut for some persuasive topics. And this is just a, a story that was in last February about what's gonna to happen to our, 